We've, we've been looking at um, what we can do with our, our regulatory framework to try and uh, introduce more segmentation of our market. You know, a lot of the talk that we've had about um, having a hybrid uh, product or something that's more targeted at sophisticated institutional investors has been one of the key uh, focuses of our re review of our framework. Now, <clears throat> we currently have, um, we in the course of the last two years, we did a complete review of our uh, legal and regulatory framework and currently have uh, what is now going to be called the Securities and, and Investments Bill, currently before uh, the Minister of Finance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for consideration uh, to put before Parliament. Now, um, within that framework, we have gone a long ways towards introducing um, the recognition of short form, short form prospectuses, the clear definition of uh, professional investors, and um, you know the the introduction of clear timelines and um, on the authority itself to carry out its own reviews and its approval mechanism. So the authority, so that the market has greater clarity uh, on the timelines for approval. Now, um, as was mentioned, over the last few years, we've also seen a, a big shift towards um, pseudo shelf registration type issuances with bonds, where they're seeking uh, a single approval for, uh, let's say, 15 billion that will be issued in multiple tranches over the coming uh, three to five years. And we've really seen that has speeded up the whole process of um, approval, as well as it gives the issuer a lot more control over pricing. You know, it's very difficult to plan to issue and then wait three months uh, to actually issue, what, what can happen in the market can be quite, um, it, it can undermine a lot of the efforts. So we've seen the introduction of those kinds of structures have been very um, useful. With um, the issue on flexibility of access, we've also been um, in discussions with uh, the Retirement Benefits Authority to look at how we can uh, better unlock access to the pension funds um, to uh, diversity of products. Um, recently, we at least uh, received the confirmation from them that when, you're looking, when they're looking at their investment criteria, um, they will have access to products that are either credit rated or approved by the authority. And in line with that is where we're looking at having you know, a hybrid product that would allow for some level of approval by the authority, but based on a short form prospectus that can be turned around a lot faster that will rely on the investor's capacity to do a, a lot more of their, their own uh, investigations. Now, I, I, and I think it's something that's been repeated um, throughout this session, is as we're looking at our, our, our framework, we have to bear in mind some of the differences that exist between the more developed and emerging markets, where, you know, I remember when we started talking of moving our bonds OTC, that was at the height of the move of OTC products back onto exchange. And I think we just have to make sure that we're conscious of what is the true risk of the products we're dealing with, and then really facilitate their growth as much as possible, as opposed to um, you know, feeling that there is a global push towards greater regulation, so we should be even tightening our own regulation. And that's something that we're battling um, with our own uh, policy development. Now, one of the key issues we've also addressed is on you know, market capacity and um, you know, building our own market capacity to come up with products that will um, take the greatest advantage of the frameworks that are there, um, as well as dealing with, um, if we have short form approvals, you know, having much tighter controls on um, point of sale um, and making sure that what they're selling is actually fit for the investor. You know, the more the authority moves towards a disclosure-based um, regime, the, the greater the reliance there will be on the intermediaries to actually make sure that what they're selling is being sold to those investors who are most competent to invest. Um, some of that may be addressed through uh, minimum investment criteria, but still we really uh, will be looking to work much closer with our intermediaries to make sure that 
um, what they, they sell appropriately. Now, um, I think one, one of the challenges we also have on the primary market and trying to encourage more, um, more corporate issuance is some of the, you know, the, the macroeconomic environment that we're in with your ability to structure competitive product when you're looking at you know, government paper that's going at over 16%. Um, it's a real challenge. We're hoping that's something that will pass and that now in that kind of an environment we'll be able to see more flow into the market. Um, we've been working on what is going to be known as a regional issuance criteria for bonds across the East African uh, capital markets. And some of the sensitivities on that have been, you know, looking at the, the different um, levels of, shall we say, you know, political ac accountability that we have. You know, you may structure a product that uh, is quick to approve, but the minute something goes wrong, will we all lose our jobs <laughs> as regulators? And I think we have to be, um, as, as much as we hear the market, um, that's why you'll, you'll consistently hear us being conscious of the risk that um, we want to make sure that what goes into the market um, will um, not bounce back at us, as it were. But we're hoping we, as our institutional investors grow in their capacity, um, that will be less and less of an issue. The, the more we're sure that what is being sold is being sold to only those who are best fit to assess those risks, then um, if they're in that position, then there's less concern. It, it, now, um, I think one, one of the other things we're trying to do as the capital markets, and we're coming back to at least the Kenyan uh, investor, uh, I mean the Kenyan market, is the, you know, designing a more robust and integrated uh, capital markets development plan. So that even when we're looking at product rollout, we're making sure that the product timelines that we have are actually reflective of product need. Um, and as well as to make sure that the, the products we're designing are actually very responsive um, to those market dynamics. Uh, we're in the process of slightly uh, different from what we're trying to do with the bond markets, but at least with um, our real, investment trace, real, real estate investment trust framework. We also have um, our consultant, Kerry Ad, be present. And um, we have been going through a much more involved process of engaging the stakeholders to make sure that what we put out there will be more responsive to their need. Now, uh, just looking at our own internal structures, um, it, the authority has undergone a recent restructuring just to make sure that even um, application processing consideration can be more internalized and structured so we can do it on a faster basis. I think one of the key issues that we'll also want to just receive more feedback from is what Daisy raised about you know, the role of credit rating and how hard we should be pushing it in our emerging markets. There we, as it were, we, we receive pressure that, okay, if you're not going to um, do a merit assessment, who is going to be the one to say whether this is good or bad? and the extent, the, the, the moral risk that we're going to have if we shift that kind of responsibility onto you know, a private sector party, we have to be very careful about um, how we market what exactly a credit rating means and how it should be relied on by the market.